Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us on World Awakening. Um, in case you missed uh, my previous show, Soul School, uh, look at those dogs. I mean, oh my God, look how cute they are. They're so cute. They're joining us tonight. They're not co-hosting or doing anything other than napping. Uh, the show that I just finished um, was about uh, life and lessons about death and the value and the beauty of loving and treasuring your loved ones and treasuring every moment that you have together. Um, and so for those of you out there who are caregivers, who know the sacrifices, but also the beauty of uh, caring for someone, especially a mother, someone who actually gave you life, um, I would encourage you to go back and look at the archive and hope that it is uplifting and that it brings um, some light into the darkness for you. Uh, that said, um, a few minutes before uh, it was time to hop into soul school. And you know, I do the shows back to back on Friday nights. Uh, I got a message from my guest that he was uh, indisposed. Um, a family crisis had arisen and he was not available to come on. So what do I do? <laughs> I said, Christine, my sister, Christine, call Aaron, tell her she's going to be on a world awakening tonight. <laughs> Don't ask her, just tell her she's going to be on tonight. She's uh, my girl Friday, uh, just ready to hop right in. And so uh, without further ado, let me welcome Erin Bush to the show. Hi. Hi, Don. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's good to see you. You too. Absolutely. You too. Um, I never even really acknowledged you on Valentine's Day. I think I sent you the, the meme card about Violet and Peggy and Peggy being a whore. I think that's all that yes. I, I managed that's to That's all you needed to say. You yeah, know. We don't celebrate it anyway. So, um, yeah. oh. oh my God, he made it. Oh my goodness. What happened? Oh, that's yes. so wonderful. I was just explaining to our viewers <laughs> that you were not going to be able to join us. Erin, just stay. The okay, no, y'all have fun. I'm going to no, go back no, to my because... couch. Oh, you want me to stay? Okay. The reason yeah, that Tom stay. is even on the show yeah. is because you were so taken with him that mm -hmm. you recommended him for the show. And the thing that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, oh, Bill, you're not going to have to change anything in the archive because voila. Um, <laughs> the thing that's so interesting about it is that Aaron and Tom met each other and uh, when she told him about me, he had no idea who I was, which I find incredibly oh. refreshing. And I had no idea who he was, which he yeah. found, in, you know, uh, absolutely plausible because he keeps such a low profile in the field that um, it would stand to reason that I had not known him. But he and I talked, what was it, Tom, yesterday? Yesterday. We talked for about a half an hour. Yeah, yeah, about that. Maybe a yeah. little longer. Yeah. yeah. So it all is well. Erin is here. And she knows way more about you than I do, although I'm <laughs> learning. And I read your bio three times because it took me three times to just absorb it. I'm gonna be all on of it, your yeah. show. <laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on your show in March. Right. So, um, so that's wonderful. So uh, take a few minutes and tell our viewers who you are and what you do, and um, and then we'll let the party begin. Hi, everybody. My name is Tom Springer. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Andrea. Great seeing you. Um, I'm happy I made it here tonight. Um, Nikki's doing well, by the way. Um, Good. Good. But as I stated, my name is Tom Springer, and I am the host of a show called Stuff I Never Learned from a School Book. Uh, the title came about because I am a very new um, awakening a couple years ago. Don't let the gray fool you. Uh, it's, it's a new awakening. and um, But the beard is very nice, I must say. Um, yeah. Beard game is on, strong. It's looking good on camera, too. So, um, but, um, but I didn't have a place, really, to reach out to others to 
find out about my abilities or to try to hone my abilities or do anything else. So I went ahead and created a site called Stuff I Never Learned from a School Book, where others like me can come and join in the community and we can talk to each other and go, all right, how can we mess this up completely, but get to blame each other for it as it happens? Sure. Um, <laughs> But uh, so it started out as a, as a relatively small community, and it still is a relatively small community, but it really is a family. And from there, it has kind of taken off to where I've had people on who are more veteran, uh, who can help give us guidance and, and tell us, no, stop doing that. You're stupid. You're doing it wrong. Um, you know, this is the way you're supposed to do it. And then someone else will go, no, no, don't listen to them because they don't know what don't they're doing. They don't know what they're talking right. about. Do it my way. Don't yeah, do what right. I don't yeah. do what I do, do what I say. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yes. And, uh, exactly. and then I started talking about sensible people like Aaron. Um, you know, and so it went a whole different <laughs> that, after that, that tells you scary, the, there, scary thought. <laughs> I'm just telling you, there's a level of people right there. Um, so <laughs> but um no, uh it it's kind of grown into more of a um kind of a catch-all for what other people would call weird, odd, abnormal, because it really is now paranormal, um, cryptid, UFO, alien, um, spiritual healers, metaphysics, time travel, um, multi multiverses, dimensions, anything else that we want to talk about, it kind of all happens right there. Uh, and it's it's really taken off. Uh, like I said, I'm still relatively small. I've been doing this show for about two years. And then... Aaron came on my show twice, three times now. Aaron's a, mm -hmm. Aaron is what I call a repeat offender. She's yeah, I was just about to call offender. myself the same. Yeah, repeat yeah. offender. Yeah, a repeat offender. And um, <laughs> yeah, she's like, hey, at some point, you want me to try to get Andrea on? And I went, Andrea, who? And she's like, Andrea Perrin. So I kind of played it off like, oh yeah, I don't know who she is. And then I went, I have no idea who she is. Um, <laughs> and I really didn't. I had no idea who you were. So it was kind of funny to uh, to do research and find out who you were. And, and I did about two pages of research, and then I decided I wanted to stop because they kept telling me the the mythological um, storytelling actress side of you and, and not the real you. And I'm like, nah, that's enough of that. So uh, then I reached out to Aaron and said, hey, about a year now we've been talking about having Andrea come on. What do you think? And she's like, well, Sure, let's do this. Brings us to today. And brings us to today. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, you know, it was it was funny. I was really quite amused when you uh told me that you had to do research. And did you ever see the movie The Conjuring? No, my wife and I still have not seen it. No. Nope. No, okay, probably it's best it, that way. It's on our bucket list. In fact, it was funny because she's like, you're going on her show. And we still haven't seen The Conjuring. How are you going to tell her that we still haven't seen The Conjuring? I'm like, like this. I haven't seen The Conjuring. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, you're one of like six people left on the planet who haven't. And, hey, and I hadn't seen it either when I met her. I had never seen the movie. had no clue. She had. Nope, uh, well, that and that's scary the movie. You have a she had no idea who I was. Absolutely <laughs> not. And And that's, you know, for me, that's really great because. Uh, well, I I am exactly who I am all the time. Good. I you know I'm I'm not uh, the only the only acting I ever do is on a stage as another character, and I gave that up years ago after 25 years as uh, a member of the theater company of Rhode Island, and I I really enjoy just being myself. Uh, all the time and consistently, authentically, stupidly me. Um, I'm very gullible. I'm very naive. I fall for every pretty face that walks in the door or that I pick up off the road. You know, I've got proof of that right behind me. Yeah. Behind you. yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and it's refreshing not to have to meet somebody that has absolutely no preconceived notions. Yeah. Right. No, I, I enjoy that. And that was, that's when I met Aaron a couple, it was a couple of years ago um, at a strange escapes uh, event with Amy Bruni and Adam Barry. And, and uh, I had peanut, my little peanut butter cup over there, right there. Peanut. Over the shoulder. Yeah. Um, with me and my father up in St. Augustine. And I had seen her in the conference, you know, it was cause she's tall and 
she's got long, beautiful hair, which I admired. And uh, so I had seen her, but I hadn't really spoken with her. And we hadn't even had a a face-to-face -face encounter like, hi, how are you? Right. Uh, because usually when I'm at these events, I've got a lot of people around me. And so if somebody is being a little bit of a wallflower or shy, well, she wasn't really being either of those. She just didn't know who I was <laughs> or, or how I was attached to the event or anything until she heard me speak at my lecture. And when it was done, I believe uh, we took Peanut out to go for a walk and she was sitting in front of the uh, resort on a, a metal bench and I plopped down next to her and I introduced myself and told my father to take the dog. <laughs> and, and I just turned and I looked at her straight in the face and I looked at her eyes and, and I said, I'm pretty sure you're connected with the Arcturians. And she said, I've been told that before. And that was it. That was it. Yeah. I mean, it was like instant connection. She understood exactly what I was saying. It was her first, What am I right, Erin? It was your first mm -hmm. paranormal event? Yeah, was ever. Your first paranormal event ever. And, yeah. and I fell in your lap. She's still <laughs> trying to recover from that. Um, right. But, you know, and I said to you yesterday on the phone, Tom, we were supposed to meet. Oh, we yeah. were, you know, this was actually supposed to happen. We have an extraordinary amount. After I was reading your bio, and I saw that your um, ancestry is indigenous, um, and uh, you have um, Nordic in you, which I see. Um, <laughs> you got that Viking thing going on. Um, and uh, my mother had, uh, a, I guess, what was it, Erin? I told you like two or three years ago, um, I got her the 23 and Me mm. for Christmas. Yeah, and she had a Nordic connection. And, and we knew she was Scottish. We knew Clan Buchanan. We knew the English, the Isles family. We knew that. Um, we knew that she had Cherokee and Creek Indian, which they really were the same tribe. Cherokee, North Georgia, the Creeks were more south and, and into Florida. Yep. Um, and uh, she has Welsh, she has Irish, she has, you know, a, a number of different bloodlines. But we discovered when we did her ancestry that she's one of nine living people on the planet that has the mitochondrial DNA of a mighty Viking queen oh. that was buried with, they just uh, not not that long ago discovered her tomb and it was filled with riches and her horses and her, I mean, it's a major, huge tomb. All of her weapons, her everything um, was discovered by archeologists hmm. and, and my mother's got her DNA. So sure. I do too, a drop or so. Yeah. Which explains why I'm such a, a, a mighty, uh, warrior for peace and that's not counterintuitive by the way it's perfectly okay to be a spiritual warrior so is that guy yeah i know so we talked and it was like oh my god we have so much in common right it's amazing it's amazing and it was like an instant connection too it was really it, it was it was i'm like oh my god i love your voice oh geez i feel like i know you it's so weird um but you came upon your gifts and your abilities later in life, which yeah. often happens. My friend Chip Coffee mm -hmm. didn't even discover that he was a medium until he, I believe he was in his 40s. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he knew there was something different about him, but it just, the door opened. The eye opened and the door opened and boom. How did that happen for you? Uh, it really happened on my first uh, investigation. I was asked to yeah. come. I was asked to come on an investigation with people that I was friends with, and they were already part of an investigation team. And they asked my wife and I to come on an investigation just to kind of check it out and hang out with them and everything else. And mm -hmm. it was a uh, it was a private investigation. It was an overnighter for a couple of nights, uh, and we got to the location, 
and we kind of set up and everything else and we're kind of sitting in the living room and all of a sudden this full person apparition walks in and an older lady in a, in a period piece and she had a nice wonderful long dress on and everything else and she stopped and she looked at me and she said you can see me and I go and I can hear you and she went okay and like it kind of threw her back it threw her off a little bit so she and I started having a conversation and well I was with another uh, two others um psychics and mediums and they were like who are you talking to and I'm like, that lady right there. And they're like, well, we can see her. Why can you see her? I'm like, because she walked into the room and started talking to me. And they were like, how long have you been able to do this? And I literally went like 10 seconds. And that was my awakening right there. I was <laughs> right at that point uh, was when I realized I was able to do this. And then at that point, it just slugged me. like. And I tell people uh, at that point, it flooded into me like I was drinking from a fire hose. So, yeah. Yep, pretty good description. Pretty right? accurate. <laughs> I know you've had Erin on your show, and she's an energy worker, an energy healer. You know, we've talked about yesterday, we talked about light workers and star seeds and all the stuff. And you told me at that time that when I do your show, I can talk about anything that I want to talk want. about. Yep. Which is great. But, um, you know, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I haven't been doing an awful lot of interviews because of my mom's situation here at home. And so, but I, I absolutely agreed to do your show um, and really looking forward to it. Um, not quite sure what we're going to delve into, probably a little bit of everything. But what is it um, about uh, energy healing? You talked about multiple dimensions and... Um, I spoke with you about, you know, the realization of oneness. Everything is one thing, how we're all connected in consciousness. And we talked about, you know, a prime creator. We talked about a lot. We, we did off we did a lot. 30 or 40 minutes. Yeah. Um, but have you been at this long enough to develop a technique? <sighs> So I have what I would warrant, and don't laugh, Aaron, because you're going to know what exactly I'm talking about. Um, I have developed what is known as the lazy technique. I don't practice anything. Um, it just kind of <laughs> happens. It, it really does. Um, I practice and- that technique, too. <laughs> well, like- Tom, hold on. You have a very specific protection technique, which I find fascinating. So that's not entirely true. What, which one? Your armor. Oh yes. So, well, that's mine. That's my protection technique, but it just happens. It's just there. Um, I, I, um, so what Aaron's talking about is I have a protection. Sorry, I just blew your cover. Oh no, you're fine. Uh, that's my super identity. You're fine. Um, so I have, uh, I, I wear this armor on me and, and it's funny because you can see behind me, my Superman stuff is all on the wall. Um, well, I actually wear, um, my superhero outfit or my armor and, and it literally is a golden like a golden armor um what i call my 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 heaven armor but my golden armor uh and it's very impenetrable um so anything that wants to try to touch me or, or tries to affect me or anything else it can't because it can't penetrate through my armor mm-hmm. and i have allowed things to come in to touch me uh but i only let it go so far and then from then i, yeah. I just yeah. cut it off but mm-hmm. um I've had to attempt to um, try to rip through it. In fact, I had to do a, a remote help with someone from the Paranormal Existence Research Society, um, and we were trying to remove something, and it wouldn't come up out of the well, and we couldn't pull it out. I'm like, I'll just go grab it. So I just grabbed it and pulled it out, and it starts striking my armor, and I just laughed at it. I'm like, oh, you're so cute. Um, yeah, and then we just let it, you know, we got rid of it, and it went away. But um, – But yeah, for the most part, though, my abilities, the only thing that I can kind of figure out is I've been doing them for so long through past lives that they're very natural to me now. So I don't have to practice them is is basically how I feel and also what I've been told. Uh, They're just Mm -hmm. there on command. Uh, So that's why I just call it the, the lazy technique. I know there's other things I can probably strengthen or sharpen if I tried. Um, but they just seem to show up when they want to, and then they just kind of stay with me. So it's yeah, how they are. Always evolving too. Well, it is, it's a process, but 
you know, do you ever have a moment at where you're a little bit fearful or that you wish that it never happened? No. Um, uh, anyone who knows me uh, personally will tell you that I have absolutely zero fear. I, I don't, I, I always tell people I'm too dumb to know any better. Yeah. So I don't have any fear. Um, but as soon as it happened, I could tell that there were times back in my, in my life, in my past where they were developing. I just wasn't paying attention to them. They were there. I just did not recognize them. Uh, but now that they've happened, I've completely accepted them. I've never said, I don't want this. There's, there's never been a time to where, um, I wish they hadn't happened. I'm very proud to have them and I'm very honored to have them because the way I'm using them, I feel is the right way to use them because I'm not using them to benefit me. I'm using them to benefit others. Uh, and I think that's what's important to use them for. Um, and luckily I, I, my, my one and only mentor and then the other people I've surrounded myself with are very good at teaching me that and, and making sure I remember that and helping me remember that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, there's no reason for me to ever not want them. Good. Right. That is, that's, that's wonderful to know because I find people that struggle the most with uh, newly discovered gifts um, re resent that this major change has happened so quickly in their lives that it kind of upsets their apple cart. <laughs> and I just, my attitude has always been go back and get a bigger cart. Right. You know, there's, there's room for lots of varieties of apples and, and the more you can learn. Um, and, you know, I don't know if, if what I came into this world knowing and experiencing uh, came from a past life or came from another planet. I don't know why well, I'm very comfortable very comfortable with saying, I don't know right. uh, in answer to a question. I'm sure when I do your show, you'll hear it several times. I say the same thing. Don't know. I say the same thing. If I don't know it, I'm not going to try to BS you on it. It's not my job. Uh, if you don't like the fact right. I don't know, then go find somebody that you're happy with that will lie to you. Well, or that will lie to right. you. Exactly. Because you know what? Nobody knows. Right. Nobody does. There are no experts in this field. Uh, you know, the paranormal is is a journey for everyone that's in it. Right. Um, it's it's a part, I think, of our spiritual ascension and our awareness, our self-awareness, but also our awareness of the cosmos and, you know, this extraordinary universe that we are all sharing. And um, and it's the the magic and the mystique and the mysteries of life, I think maybe are supposed to remain mysteries yeah. until we're done with the life. That's why I'm right. so fascinated with people who have had near death experiences. Um, my friend, uh, Lenny, uh, Lynn Ann Bowling, her husband, Jeff, has had a couple of near death experiences that have broadened his horizons in ways that he never, he, he thinks differently. Now yeah. he openly admits that, um, you know, coming that close to death, seeing the other side and then be, you know, being gifted with a return to this life completely alters the perspective of the person who undergoes that transition. Um, yeah. and so they're the ones I think NDE people are the ones that probably, if there's anybody in this field that has anything to teach us, it's probably them. Yeah. It's probably them. And the rest of us are just flying by the seat of our pants. <laughs> we just don't know. I would agree with that. Yeah. Well, you know, one of these days. Um, you're going to pick up my books and you're going to read a story that will curl your, your beard. Um, <laughs> and after that happens and when you are properly um, uh, prepared and enticed 
will make arrangements for you to go and experience the farm. Erin, talk about experiencing the farm. <laughs> oh my goodness, I, I, Where I do I start? No. I'm in love with this farm already simply because Erin shares so much with it. Um, and so I, sorry, Erin, I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but. Um, no, you're good. Don't worry about it. I do it all the time. <laughs> So I, I did. Show I it do it too. It's good. I did show with Andrea yesterday, and you knew this already, Aaron. That I pick up energies through pictures and through videos, and just from seeing you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can tell if you're a good person or if you're someone who I'm just like, nope, not today. Um, no. And I do the same thing with the with the properties and and the home and everything else. And there is such a a familiarity to it to me for some reason. Um, it's. I feel like I've been here before, um, even though I've never honestly been to it, at least in this lifetime. Um, but there's such a comfortableness to it. It's, it's very homey to me. It's very relaxing to me, even through images. And now I get to share them through uh, Britt Isley and through Michelle Royce, Royce as well. So I get to see them there. So now I get a plethora of the pictures. Oh, I got to use a big word today. Uh, the plethora of pictures today. Um, <laughs> where I get to just enjoy it through all of you and the descriptions you give, it's very odd because a lot of times I'll see it and I'll get a, a recognition of it and then you'll say it. And I'm like, Oh, that's exactly what I was feeling. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like there's a connection through it somehow. And it's really cool to, uh, to get to experience that way, but I would like to experience it up close. So, well, and he, what's interesting, Andrea, I think we've talked about this before is that Tom very much has a tie with, elementals um, and obviously we've all discussed experiences we've had on the property with the potential of elementals i mean i know there's one that presents to me often he looks like a giant uh groot but he's not a cartoony but that's similar you know huge tree so yeah. yep. i think for tom too that tie for you there's not a lot of people who are well Brittany is specifically drawn to she's got to draw to elementals as well so yep. How does that kind of look for you too when you're when you're exploring an elemental type situation? Like, what's your draw for that? Um, as far as what do I what do I feel? What do I see? What do I hear? Or what yeah, do you like look? any of it? Like, what's what's your draw to them? Or did they come to you? How you know? Is it something? So my, you know, some my, of us are more aligned with certain things. My, you seem to go that way with the elementals. It's, it's really we used to talk about. It's, it's really my culture. I, I'm, I'm not only indigenous as we spoke, but I'm also Norse. And both sides are very much tied to the earth. Uh, yes. and, I, and I believe that's where my strong uh, attachment is to elementals. Because I am one of the few who can see, hear, and talk to elementals just like I'm talking to both of you ladies right now. Uh, they come to me just like they're a regular person. They talk to me like a regular person. But it's very frustrating because they do not have the normal feelings of a, of a human. Uh, you know, their purpose is literally to do what they're sent here to do, uh, heal the earth, take care of the wind, uh, cleanse areas with fire and to protect with water. Uh, and they come to me and they say, I'm here. This is what I'm doing. And it's like, I can't question them or anything else because they're like, this is just what I'm doing. But um, I've had a couple of conversations with them to where they've assisted me Um I think it is because of my tie to them that they're willing that, that they, we both have that understanding that we're we're both of earth and so they you know for the, for the better part of saying it we're both from earth so they um, people need to understand that elementals are not aliens they are they are actually um, from the environment themselves it is not an alien thing it's an environmental thing and that's how they come about so I think that's my strong attachment to them is because I'm so strong in both my Norse and my um, indigenous backgrounds uh, that they, we just, we're just part of each other is the best way to say it. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, my experience at the farm, um, the farm itself, it's not just the house. Right. It's the property. The property. Yeah. As I was gonna say, it's the property. And the experiences that I've had there. I mean, there is a, a river. Um, it's the Lost River of New Hampshire that was buried during the last ice age. And it runs directly under the farm. 
and you can go lay on the stone walls and you can feel the vibration of the water um, mm -hmm. that's 700 feet down. It's it, it was a 700 foot well we had to dig before we hit it. Wow. And when we did, the pressure was so much that it blew apart all the rigging uh, for the well diggers. It just, it shattered the uh, the gauge uh, and, and all the equipment, everything just got blown apart. It was a geyser. It was like, you know, had it been oil, <laughs> right. I'd be on a beach in Tahiti. Um, oh, yeah. but, <laughs> um, it, uh, it, but you can literally feel the vibration of the planet there. And uh, one of our mutual friends, uh, Julie DeMay, took a, a fleer or a fleur mm -hmm. yeah. of yeah. the farm one time, and it looked like it was a blaze. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. was absolutely amazing, um, the energy that's coming off of that place. Uh, and it's not just spirit. It's elemental energy. Yeah. It's extraterrestrial energy. It's, you know, a, a, there's so, well, we learned really quickly moving into that house in, uh, when we bought the house in 1970, uh, moved in on January 11th of 1971. And we learned, you know, very quickly that uh, we were occupying shared space. Yeah. And that as big as yeah. the house was, it was really crowded. <laughs> um, and and so uh, I think I was the first one who saw a full body apparition in the house. But he appeared perfectly uh, flesh and blood to me. Um, I thought he was dressed rather oddly, but... Uh, as I walked past him, I said, good morning, sir. It never occurred to me that he was a ghost. Yeah. Um, but my sister Nancy saw him like evaporate in front of her eyes uh, a few minutes later when she was walking through the house and she saw him too. And four of the five of us, of uh, the children, saw him within the first five or 10 minutes that we lived in the house. And we were off to the races. I mean, so that's why I asked you about, you know, when you had your uh, awakening, when you had your awareness that you'd been gifted and were unaware until that moment, um, if you had um, any fear about it, because we didn't, he wasn't threatening in the least. This was just, but we were little kids, You're right? And, you know, it was just something really new and different and, you know, kind of like Dorothy, we knew we weren't in Kansas anymore. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of people who are older, who stumble upon for whatever reason, that door finally opens for them, um, really struggle with it. And it's very refreshing to see that you don't struggle and that you embrace it. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm that firm believer that if it happened to me, then there's a reason for it. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, to me, to me, nothing is accidental. Um, so if you're gonna give me these gifts to use, then by all means, allow me to use them. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna shy away from them. I'm not a shy, quiet person. If you haven't been able to tell, no, I uh, kind of picked up on that vibe. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm not gonna run away from anything like this. If, the, if they're gonna hand it to me, I'm gonna use it to the best of my ability. So, well, outside of being a lazy person but yeah for the most part i'll use it to the best of my ability <laughs> well but i wonder no. for you oh sorry no that's I okay was, Go ahead. i was just wondering too i think I, I wonder for you because you do have the background of the indigenous side but then you also have the north side those two huge parts of you are both based in elements and nature and earth right. and connection and groundedness so i'm all you know and then you tie in your elemental side it almost makes sense to me that it comes naturally to you, that it wasn't quite the struggle that it can be. Like I spent six months basically, and I say this sort of sarcastically, but not entirely like rocking in the fetal position in the corner, like, Oh God, make it stop. <laughs> but I didn't have, I didn't understand the connection to the earth and the, like, I didn't know any of that. Like it wasn't an innate thing to me at that time. Whereas for you, I'm curious, do you feel like two part question that that's a natural thing? And maybe that helped you, make things easier and then in a place like the farmhouse 
the fact that you do have that indigenous tie, as does the property, because our friend Carrie also has indigenous blood, also very drawn to the land, especially over the bridge. So do you feel like that connection to the elements for you kind of helps both of those things? Uh, so for really the first question, sorry. Yeah, and that's okay. But for the first part, I think, well, um, so obviously no one here knows what my background is, except for probably you, Aaron, as far as my right. military background. Um, and I was always on foot. Everything was, everything I did, I was, I laid on the grass. I went across the water. I did everything. Everything I did when I was military was attached to earth. We didn't fly places. We ran places. We walked places. We crawled through places. We did everything like that. Um, but even growing up, I was always, I was always doing something dirt eater, swimmer, uh, you know, everything else like that. That was me, bug eater, all that wonderful stuff. I was always doing something that had to, <laughs> that had to do with the land. Uh, and it's, I just grew up that way. And, you know, I always had to have my, even now I live in, I live in Nebraska and people think I'm nuts because it's freezing out here, but I still have to be barefoot and I can walk outside barefoot because my feet have to be touching the ground. Um, and I'm always yeah. that way. Uh, and it's just natural. And I, I think with the, um, I think with the, with the house, I think it's a combination of, and like you said, Andrea, it's, it's the property, but there's also a very, yes, to your question, Aaron, the, the, um, the elemental part of the property is very much drawn to me. Like I could, yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry, but um, here we go, y'all. I know, I saw it. Your, um, your property with the water underneath it, with the river underneath it, will react differently when I show up. Uh, it just will. Mm -hmm. It'll hum totally different when I get there, uh, and the wind will act differently when I get there. Um, they, it, it's, I don't, I don't mean that to sound braggadocious or anything else, but whenever I've gone places, like I went out to Hawaii with a couple of friends and they went to places with me and they're from there. And even they said, we have never experienced this before. What is this? And I go, Oh, these are the wind elementals, uh, guarding us as we walk through. And they're like, we've never had a wind like this before. This is incredible. And they're like, well, I'm like, well, wait till we get to the water. And as soon as we got to the water, the wind stopped. And they basically said, we're handing you off to the water elementals. We're done protecting you. Now it's the water elementals turn. And all of a sudden, the water was just stream, but it picked up so much speed and so much strength. And they were like, what is this? And I'm like, this is our water elementals taking care of us. So I'm. Um, it's, it seems to happen when I'm amped up in energy. Uh, and it, mm -hmm. seems that, it seems that they seem to um, want to talk. That they want to show off in a way to others to say, Hey, I'm here. I, let us show you what we can do type of thing. So it's pretty cool. And I think that has a lot of it to do with the property as well is because I'm anxious to get there because I have that feeling of what's going to happen when I'm there. And I think it's going to be something different compared to what has happened before. Um, just, just <laughs> you're going to have property. a lot of, <laughs> you're going to, they're going to have a field day with you. I, so you talk about the yeah. wind, Andrew, I know experience as well. Like, I always try to be very cognizant of all the spirit and, yeah. on the property. And, you know, like I'll, I'll be camping the first couple of nights. And I'm not going to lie that that scared the hell out of me. I mean, you, like that's a whole other show. But after the first couple of nights, I just set out to the, you know, thank you so much for keeping me safe. And there's not a lot of wind normally up there in the, in Rhode Island, unless there's a right. storm or something. And literally just in front of me, probably within like a hundred foot, like foot sort of radius, this wind just out of nowhere just in this one spot where I was standing just starts. I think I called Andrew as soon as it was done. And it, that was when it dawned on me for the first time that the, the elements are paying attention to you too, when you're there. And that doesn't happen everywhere. Yeah. And then of course you take somebody like you to come on to a place like that. Yeah. Pardon my language, but Holy shit. <laughs> I will make sure I'm there that week. Well, <laughs> we've all had experiences with vort vortex wind yep. um events on the farm yep. um you have one of the spirits from the, they all know that we're talking about them they they're you know free to fly uh but yeah um one of them is with you right now i think i know who no i'm not going to mention any names but i'm pretty sure she's there with you right now um yeah. definitely female energy no question about it i've kind of been watching her peeking mm -hmm. in and out you know i'm and i'm 
I'd be curious to know through. if any of the viewers picked up on that. If yeah. any of our viewers saw uh, that, that female entity that's with you. And she didn't show up until we started talking about the farm. Yeah. And, no. and we know who she, we know who she is. And we yeah. are um, entering a new age with her. Um, we have chosen to kind of keep her identity. And Tom knows this too. Actually, I did Tom's show after, I think after my three weeks stint up there last summer. Yep. Um, and he was very respectful with me trying to still process some of the things that have been going on. But I think it's interesting that we're talking about this. She never pops up on shows ever. And she is, um, I think having her eyes opened a bit as well. So I do find it interesting that it, it sounded like my fridge was getting jostled like this. That's why I kept looking mm -hmm. over. It's, I mean, it's just right there, but yeah. I think she's in the guest room. So I do find it interesting that we're having this discussion and she's like, ah, you know, in, in like an excited way. So I think that bodes to Tom's energy too, because she doesn't, um, really love men a whole, whole lot currently. So I think that's yeah, I, testament to I, Tom's I, energy. It's funny. Cause a lot of people, especially kids, it's amazing how well kids, um, Kids will look at me and they'll just stare. It doesn't matter where we're at. Um, people have seen it all over the place. We'll just be in a store and all of a sudden the kid will just not even paying attention to anything else. All of a sudden they'll stop and they'll stare, stare at me mm -hmm. and then they'll mm -hmm. smile and they'll wave. And mm -hmm. it's it's so many kids, um, but the parents react. That's your extraterrestrial connection too. Yeah. That was my question for you. <laughs> <laughs> because exactly the same thing happens to me, children particularly. Yeah, they, they do it all the time. They stop. It seems like whenever I'm walking by somebody, like if I'm walking by a gentleman or I'm walking by a couple or whatever else, I won't even be you know paying attention to them. I'm not staring at them or anything else. But when it seems like when a guy walks by me, they're like, hey, like they always are the first ones to interact with me. And I'm not and I'm, I'm always nice enough and respectful to say hi back. But. I'm never expecting it, but it happens all the time. And we don't know what it is, but um, but Nikki's like, did you know that person? I'm like, no. I'm like, why'd this add you? I'm like, I don't know. So, <laughs> oh, no. so it just happens. Oh, you you put off, a, um, you know, everything is vibration. Everything is, is energy. And, you know, we resonate with each other in the same way that you and I did, the same way when I met Aaron, you know, and, and countless other people that have come through my life that I might've only encountered that one time. Right. But it left an impact and made an impression. And there was a, a connection that happened and, and we don't know what it is, but for me, um, I think that that's that part of us. Well, you said to me yesterday after we had only talked for a few minutes, and out of the blue, you said to me, are, are, are you a hybrid? Yep. No. And I think that um, a lot of us that are in this field that have gravitated in an almost magnetic way to the paranormal have an extraterrestrial connection. Mm -hmm. I don't for a moment think that we're not here with purpose and reason at this time of uh, a, a time of urgency and crisis for the planet and uh, a time when uh, technology is exploding and and we there's a part of us that knows where all of that comes from and that it, we were gifted with it. You know, it wasn't just an, an overnight miracle that we went from you know, burning whale oil 150 years ago for light right, to, right. you know, traveling around the solar system now, um, you know, that was, uh, there's, there's a connection. And I want to know when you are drawn to it and fascinated by it. And what do you feel that your extraterrestrial connection is? Oh my. Um, I have, I have been that kid, I can say that that long ago, I've always been that kid that always looked up and mm -hmm. said, there's, that's, that's me. That's, that's me. Um, it's, it's always been that way. Um, and it carried on through my entire life. I mean, my, my 
degree is in quantum mathematics and theoretical statistics. So even in that Jesus. realm, it went through where I can take all that information and push it into the universe and try to do statistics with it and then also carry um, a lot of the physics background. And I was really, I was very much interested in, in, in voids and dark matter. And, you mm -hmm. know, is it, is it, is it fractal or is it wave or what is it that, that creates what we're around and is it a combination of the two? And so it's just been kind of like my entire growing up as it is. And even now, uh, Nick and I were lucky enough to move out onto, onto a lake that's very quiet and not a whole lot of lights around us at all. So at, at night when it gets dark, we go outside and we look up at the stars. Uh, I'm still just very drawn to it very much. Uh, it just happens to be what, what I, I, I can say consciously and subconsciously, it's, I've always had that pull. Um, mm -hmm. As far as anything else, I don't know. I mean, I, I fully believe... I, well, I, I actually had a starseed reading done. Um, I believe it's pretty accurate. Um, but because when I read through a lot of it, a lot of it was uh, um, an aha moment. You know, it was like, oh, well, that that makes a lot of sense to me. That that really resonates with me. And I didn't do it until a year ago. So it's not like I read it when I was 10 and now I've just kind of developed it off of what I read. No, I've already lived it all. And now it's telling me what I've already lived. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to see it that way. Well, I know an awful lot of people that have military background mm -hmm. that gravitate to the paranormal. Um, mm -hmm. And I've, I've wondered what that connection is. I also know that I, I, I have a number of uh, friends who are contactees who from a very early age uh, decided that they needed to go into the Air Force and be a pilot. Yeah. Um, and it always, that urgency, that that feeling of, uh, I need to do this, this is what I'm supposed to do, generally came after their first contact. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think my... Um... I don't know if I've ever been contacted. I couldn't tell you if I ever have, but I can tell you that I believe that wherever, whatever part of me is attached to whatever, whatever region I'm from out in the universe has always been a protector because I've been a protector my entire life. Mm -hmm. uh, even my military, that's what I did. I protected people. Um, and so that's been something I've, I believe I've done through not only this life, but numerous other lives and in um, not only human lives, but other starseed lives as well. But I've always been a protector. And I think that's why I'm good at it now, <laughs> because I've had so much practice from the past. Yeah. Yeah. That's fascinating to me. Yeah, it is. I love that. Um, I need to introduce you um, to my friend Rupert, who is, I guess, for lack of a better phrase, is space scientist, rocket okay. scientist. Uh, he should be working at NASA, but um, he'd probably freak them out completely because I know he's not from here. I know he's not from here. Like, you know, yeah. on the earth, but not of the earth. Yeah, right. um, he's an amazing, amazing man. So what we'll do is we'll have you, what I'll do is I'll connect you with him so that you can be on his, um, his show that okay. he does here on KGRA um, and then have you both on together um, to talk about, <laughs> of course, I'll feel like the dumb kid on the block, you know, cause I only have two degrees and they're in philosophy and English literature. So you're the scientists and I'll just sit there with my mouth hanging open and listen to your discussion. Um, and what did I tell you? What was the last thing that I told you, Tom, before we hopped off the phone yesterday? Oh my goodness. Um, unfortunately, Maybe how fast an hour can go? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. True. Yeah. And okay. I, yeah. We talked about how fast my hours go on my shows, huh, Aaron? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. They go fast. They go very fast. Yep. Yeah. Well, we're down to about three minutes. And so I want to thank both of you, Aaron. Thank you for hopping in at the last conceivable moment. Of course. Um, and I know she's, oh, she's just like, I have several a sisters 
um, <laughs> Lenny, uh, Aaron, Greta. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, like, and I circle my wagons and and um, and feel very, very protected and loved by my uh, my tribe, as it were. Um, but you have now been sucked into our family. And so um, I'm somebody again, yay! No, <laughs> yeah, you always were. You always were. Thank you. And I, I very much appreciate Aaron introducing us, and I very much appreciate you moving mountains to get here tonight and come on the show Thank you. and um we'll uh connect on facebook are we connected on facebook you know it is the official home of the paranormal yeah we're not connected on facebook um okay i'll take one of my cousins to the curb and make room for you they're used to it they know they're placeholders I and, uh, <laughs> and we'll get you on so that we can advertise you know do a promo for your our upcoming show together in march Perfect. And um, and I will join you then. We'll just pick up where we left off. But I very much appreciate um, both of you being Thanks. with me uh, this evening. And uh, I will just end the broadcast tonight and hang around mm -hmm. afterwards. I'll talk to you after we're off. <laughs> but um, uh, I will end the broadcast tonight the way that I always do. Except, um, please, if you would take a moment to um, say a prayer for the Navalny family. Uh, I would appreciate that personally. And remember to be the change that you wish to see in the world and always be the beacon and be the light you seek. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Good night.